heard about it. I've just wanted to go because I'm looking for that personal validation. So for the people who aren't familiar with the ranch, what can you tell us about it? Well, it was founded in uh, 1986 and basically on a vision where I kept seeing a beautiful mountain in front of me, a big mountain, and then a river and just a beautiful piece of property. But uh, I kept seeing the words little mountain in the vision. It didn't make sense. And there was a small mountain at the, the backside of the ranch if you go, if you look towards the south. So it was, it was really interesting that uh, uh, when I found the ranch, actually it ended up being on Little Mountain Road. So I, I didn't know why they kept giving me that message. But uh, I wanted to give you a little heads up. I am down in Mexico. And, <laughs> uh, and so it's, you know, it's, it's the loud country. I was just going to say, I'm hearing some, some kind of animal, a dog or something. Yeah, yeah. So you might hear that in the background. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll calm down. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> That's fitting for Mexico. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, the, uh, the basically it, was, it was, came from visions, and I had a near-death experience that blew me wide open and drowned and crossed over and... When I came back, I left the door open, so I have Damn. what would be like an interdimensional mind. And, wow, man. And so I can go back and forth you know, between the dimensions and experience the different beings on those dimensions. Yeah, see, that type of insight is super valuable, and uh, I'd like to extract as much as I can from that. But as far as ESETI is concerned, for people who aren't familiar, I mean, that is a, you've built this ranch um, near Mount Adams in Washington, Trout Lake, and you see orbs and UFOs all the time at this ranch, correct? Yeah, it's an ongoing thing. We uh, <clears throat> we have some a lot of scientists come out and bring their equipment. We have all kinds of you know third generation military equipment, night gear, hooked up to cameras and hooked up to all kinds of things. So it's uh, it's something that's just basically ongoing, and uh, uh, it never you know it hasn't stopped. <laughs> I might have to move this location or yeah man is there a is there a quieter spot or a door or window you can close or anything like that unfortunately not with this one because i'm out on a patio and that's oh man available but well it'll probably calm down here yeah they usually do so that is kind of crazy though you being in mexico i've you know living in america and and seeing the matrix that we're victims of in the middle class here i've often thought about going to some other country how, how do you feel about mexico down there what part are you in how, how much do you like it do you see the differences well yeah definitely the uh it's here it's it's you know funny people have all these things about fear and and you know all these other things about mexico i've been coming down here for probably eight years now and i actually feel safer here <laughs> than i do in the states because i know in the states they're always looking for me and they're always you know pulling pr stun stunts with you know black helicopters and and satellites and putting up equipment and gear on another mountain so uh across from us so you know they're always playing around with psychotronics and you name it so you know, here, here I, I feel a lot safer down in Mexico than I do with our own government. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so backwards, to probably, to a lot of people who are here who think that there's no security in Mexico, that it's just the Wild West. But, you know, it's if anybody's going to fuck with me here, it's going to be police. You know, regular it, people don't bother me. It's always, always police that are causing trouble in my life. Yeah, it's true. That's the way. And, you know, it is. It's... Here, you know, they just don't bother you. you don't bother them. They don't bother you. And if you're not, you know, dealing drugs or doing something, you know, of a nefarious nature, they just pretty much everybody leaves you alone. Oh, man. That's, that right there is paradise in my eyes. <laughs> yeah. I just want to be left alone. But uh, anyway, back to uh, East SETI in this Mount Adams area. I mean, it has a long history of UFO activity, right? I mean, some people claim that there's either an ET base in the mountain or there's some type of opening to the inner earth there. What's your opinion? Yeah, there's all the above. It's, it's basically a stargate. So we have things coming in from the top. And then there's a, a door that opens up in the mountain itself. And, uh, and so we get a lot of activity you know, there, and we've got that on film, actually, this huge light door opening up and ships coming in and out of the of the, uh, of the doorway. So so we have both going on. We have the inner earth connection going on there and the, the Stargate. 
Wow. I actually heard, like, as far as the Stargate's concerned, there's there's researchers out there that talk about ley lines and at these certain energy nodes, there are some type of natural uh, dimensional gateways. A lot of people suggest that that's what the Bermuda Triangle really is. Uh, is this on some type of ley line or energy node that you know of? Yeah, it's, it, it is. It's definitely a vortex, and there's two major lines that cross there at the ranch, and there's like an orb highway there that uh, it's just amazing we go out at night and we, we can see just you know literally thousands of orbs going by you know in in like a channel of energy that's amazing man i mean seeing all these tons of ufos and crafts and orbs over a long period of time are there any sightings that really stand out to you from what you normally see there yeah i would say Boy, I mean, we've had stuff come down and land on the mountain and morph into as many as three and four ships and then go back to one again wow. and then do it three or four times and then take off and then a military jet chase it. And it just led the jet off uh, and then it came back, you know, after the jet, you know, chased it off, it just turned around and popped right back on the mountain again and went about its business. So we have, uh, and we actually filmed the whole, the whole event. So we have... A lot of things like that. I think, you know, when when they make a right ag right angle turn at you know several thousand miles an hour, or they they come over and they flare up and respond to the people on the ground, uh, you know, that to me is pretty amazing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those videos on your site, and they do look pretty convincing. Yeah. Um, it it's. It's hard because when you're looking through the perspective of a camera, it's not really the same. And some of them look so far off in the distance. And I know that when I've filmed things outside before, usually they look further in the camera than they do actually. Um, mm -hmm. And But, I mean, still, they, they definitely look like something's going on there. And I've seen the jets scramble and try to chase something. So that's also compelling. Oh, yeah. We had on my birthday, I was meditating, and I asked him, you know, for a birthday present to just fly over the house, and they did. And they they flew over the house and came in uh, treetop level and then powered the ship up and just lit the whole sky up. So wow. some of these things, we, we'll have like four or five cameras on them, sometimes two to three cameras, or we'll have as many as 200 people, uh, witnesses to go along with the footage. So. You know, it's hard to deny, especially when you have, you know, triple PhD Boeing engineers and Skunk Works people and Lockheed yeah. engineers and Air Force base commanders and pilots, you know, all testifying that, you know, this is a real event. That is crazy, man. I mean, why do you think this is occurring? What you think is there? There's obviously some type of contact telepathic involved if you're calling them on your birthday to fly over. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had, you know. It's a big joke here, but he goes, when's contact going to happen? And we always say, well, where have you been the last 25 years? But contact's been ongoing. It's been going on even before Egyptian times, and it's you know well recorded back then, and you know in the Mayan times, and and uh, so you know it's an ongoing thing. It's a matter of rising to the occasion. But if if you're going to be brainwashed and and wait for the, you know the uh, officialdom to tell you that it's real and that contact is happening and things like that, then, you know, you're giving your power away. You're missing the boat because everything's external. Yeah. And, and you're waiting for some external authority to tell you it's okay to, to believe in what you already know is happening, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, let's uh, back up a little bit. Can you give us a little history as it pertains to ET contact? I mean, there's a lot of researchers out there that are, have been talking about this, that this long timeline of intervention, but I hear a lot of different versions of the story, and I'd like to hear your perspective on the story of the Anunnaki and the Archons and how there are still some effects of that history today, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, wow, that's a long one. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, uh, the, the basically, you know, we've been colonized you know there's been colonized for we have uh, historical artifacts and things that go back um, 650 million years and if you want to look up that just go to you know Michael Cremo's work Forbidden Archaeology yes you know that's all very well documented but um, you know one of the stories goes back to 450,000 years which they talk about the Anunnaki who, who came here and they brought their own people, the Ijiji, you know, to, to help mine for gold because they're creating gold as an aerosol to protect their planet mm -hmm. when it swings around the sun, you know. So 
they were doing a lot of lot of work on that level, and they had a big rebellion. So they they took a, a Neanderthal man, a knuckle dragger, and they uh, jumped his genetics up. And so they it was a win win situation basically because the, the the Neanderthal man got a huge leap in consciousness yeah. and, energy and evolution. And and uh, and they continued to work with them and, and continued to upgrade them as as they went along, and they got the the labor they needed for the gold, you know, to get the gold they needed to save their planet, and so the original Anunnaki were very uh, above board. They operated under universal law. Uh, they they were highly you know spiritual, very very evolved, and they had. A council of twelve, which were six men and six women on that council, and when they when they got what they needed and they left, they left a group of them of theirs behind, and uh, and the problem was is with the fallen ones, the group they left behind. They're the ones that screwed everything up, you know. When they left, you know, and they got into power trip, trips and greed, and you know, they were the original Hatfield and McCoys. They it got into all kinds of turf wars and things like that, but there was no council anymore to govern them. So they kind of run amok and, and fell in consciousness. And, and we're still dealing with that today, that impact of, 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 you know, wrathful gods and loving creative gods and all these images, the bearded gods, you know, all those images go back to the ancient Anunnaki. And do you think, the global elite of today, the people who are run us from the shadows, do you think they have at least taken up the example of these early beings? Or do you think that we're still under the control of these same bloodlines from some shadowy place? Yeah, they're still there's st well the problem is with the Anunnaki is one particular one named Marduk. He he fell uh, he wanted total control of the earth, and he even went to war against his own people, and he made uh, an alliance with these reptilian beings. And so that is a, it's just a big mess that's still plaguing us to this day, and that's what the Illuminati, the you know, the fallen Illuminati, those groups, that's what they align themselves with, because all they care about is power and wealth and greed and power over others. They don't care about anything else, and, and that's that, that consciousness. Well, you know, I've heard stories of Eisenhower meeting with the Greys and exchanging technology for the ability to abduct a certain percentage of the population. Um, stories like that, stories that, you know, they are at the higher levels making sacrifices to absorb the energy to these beings. Um, do you think our government has made these types of deals with certain ETs or do you think they're just as clueless as the population in modern times? Oh no, they they've been trading genetics for technology for quite some time, and that's where all the abduction scenario goes into. And some of these low-level beings actually prey on the negativity. They prey on the on the fear and the pain and the suffering. You know, and that's they they actually want all the wars and they want all the you know the poverty and the disease and everything else. They they actually feed off of that. Man, you know, I actually I love hearing about stories of higher dimensional beings and positive ETs that can be guiding us from the shadows and you know or beings deep inside the earth that push us towards a more peaceful and harmonious society but I just haven't gotten enough validation to commit to that idea I mean even though I love to hear about it I just worry that it might be a version of this tendency people have to look for leadership or a savior because the truth of these negative entities the truth of how concise this control grid is it can be really overwhelming to deal with you know I mean what would you say to that well the the good news is there are benevolent beings that are much more evolved much more powerful and they have they have creational energy technology they're far beyond these dark forces and their their time is up I mean they they're actually uh, the on the highest levels on the darkest levels you might say they're being taken out and any, any of the fallen Anunnaki are actually being called before the council because the the benevolent council's back. They just returned, and you're seeing a huge unraveling now of, of the powers that were, you know, from the top down. And and the Illuminati are doing their ceremonies, and there's nobody there, you know. <laughs> they're, yeah. And they're calling on guidance now, and and you see that's why they're floundering and making so many mistakes and making so many screw ups. Is because they don't have the co connections anymore, the contacts, because they're being removed from the top down. 
Is there anything that shows through in the mainstream that, you know, points to that? Well, yeah, you can see a lot of the, 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 the old program is totally unraveling. You can see it, you know, with the banksters, with everything else. It's reached its apex of greed, you know, and, and uh, uh, it, it just can't go any further. And there's no foundation for it anymore. There's, there's nothing to feed this massive pyramid they've created. So it's just a matter of time before that that collapses in on itself. So that's going to implode. All those power structures, the mega corporations are imploding. People are waking up. You know, you can see like Mon Monsatan, you know, or Monsanto yeah. uh, really getting hammered right now from every angle. And, and I've been helping with that, actually. I've been helping uh, some people that are actually writing legislation and getting it out there and, and supporting that, you know, uh, especially in Hawaii with some council... Uh, Margaret um, Willie is one of them that, that wrote this legislation. It's beginning to, to put a, a slowdown on all this stuff. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, people are waking up. They're being educated because of shows like this. And uh, people are, are starting to rise up and just say enough's enough. But the, the reason people are awakening and, and rising is because the old grid, the old consciousness grid is, is imploding. It's falling apart. And there's a new fifth dimensional grid pressing in hard and, and taking its place. And when you say fifth dimensional grid, do you like, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about raising their vibration or, or resonating at a higher frequency through mm -hmm. meditation and through some of these Eastern practices. Is this something you wouldn't recognize unless you were well in tuned? Well, it, it, there's a multi-level event going on, so you'll, you'll see on a base foundational one, you'll see uh, things getting exposed almost immediately. You'll see almost like instant karma happening, like the action-reaction principle is being accelerated. Um, you'll see a lot of relationship stuff where there's a lot of tyranny going on, uh, a lot of control issues coming up. And, you know, the old wounds and traumas of the past are all surfacing you know, to be healed, and, and there's waves of energy that are coming through and doing that, and we just went through a huge wave of energy right after Thanksgiving, and we're in the middle of it right now, and and I, I know my phone and emails are just off the scale with people saying, what is happening, like everything is coming up for me, and my relationship, and my work, and, and uh, it's getting crazy out there, and people are just having, you know, emotional outbursts, and... Uh, Everything from from deep sadness to you know anger and and a lot of people projecting their issues rather than owning and healing them. So I, that's I see it on a on a very base level just through you know the emails and the phone and people uh, asking for counseling for help to get through these times. I mean I will be honest with you I have noticed an increased amount of synchronicities in the past uh, I don't know 3 or 4 months in my life but I just I still struggle with how much value to give that. Well yeah it's it's I can just go from my own experience and having this pretty massive network that I'm connected into and doing counseling for like I don't know, 35 years or so I'm just watching the uptick, and, and uh, I know a lot of people that are extremely sensitive people that I trust. You know, they've been very active in the past, and they're all coming up with the same information. And, and I just got back from the Star Knowledge Conference, and we uh, met with a lot of the elders there uh, of the different nations, you know, in, in the States, and that was pretty amazing. And they came up with the exact same information that we came up with that you know that would be a huge shift of energy coming in right after Thanksgiving and another one right after Christmas that it's going to really push everything up for people and and a lot of people if you're very dense in consciousness and you're holding on to a lot of aggression or control or energies you know or, or you've been deeply wounded all of that is surfacing right now yeah man I would want nothing more than a real wake awakening to take place um I really hope that that's what we're what we're going through. Um, yeah, it's unavoidable. It's 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 you know the old saying resistance is futile. It's the Earth's destiny to go there, and we have to become frequency specific to the Earth's you know evolutionary process. And it's a you know a cosmic event. All the dimensions are involved in it. So 
it's unavoidable. Uh, there's nothing that can stop it. We can just choose how gracefully we move through it. Yeah. I wanted to step back to this council. You said that they had just returned, that they are, you know, the archons are being forced to go before this council. Is this something that's happening on a higher dimensional level or is this playing out on our third dimensional reality? Well, most of it's happening on another dimension, but a lot of that's the sixth, you know, uh, these are six dimensional beings that are coming in. So, but it is bleeding down, you know, and, and they're, they're actually pulling these people off the fourth dimension and cleaning up the fourth dimension. That's where all the a lot of the negativity resides, you know, in in the unseen. And a lot of people are stepping up to the plate and learning how to heal unseen negative influences and not give them any more energy and not participate, you know, in the negativity. So so it is building, you know, mm -hmm. it is building up. You know, I, I really have not been able to have very many experiences with meditation or anything like that, but I've had a small handful of experiences that were fueled by psychedelics that seemed very much like contact experiences. I mean, what are your thoughts on using psychedelics that way? Well, you know, we try to, uh, we try to avoid uh, any of that. Like, I, mm -hmm. ne I never used it myself. I didn't need to because of the drowning experiences. Right. Um, I know a lot of people have experiences like through ayahuasca and, and you know, some people are doing it the right way with the trained shaman, you know, out in the jungle once or twice a year. But other people are just using it as a party tool, you know. Right, yeah, that's, and, and, that's no and good. They, you know, yeah, and they open up doors and they get, you know, reptilian and grays and other, you know, discarnate beings hooked into their energy field. So um, I... I know there's safe natural ways of doing it and and you get you go much higher than you know you don't just go into the fourth dimension and have all these crazy uh, snakes and other beings and weird things happen to you you get into the higher dimensions and there you're dealing with beings that are are much more benevolent and much more advanced and what are some other techniques you would suggest for someone who wants to reach that type of natural communication other than, I mean, the generic meditation is what everyone says. Is there anything else? Well, we do practices like Yigong that are, are extremely ancient practices that balance out the left and right side of the brain and get you into no mind where you're not just using your, your mind all the time and get you back into the heart because the, the soul resides right next to the heart and that's the connector to spirit and uh, that's where all your past lives everything reside your memories uh, you know in, in the astral level and you can go beyond that into the etheric or into what people call Christ, Christ consciousness and there's levels beyond that even that you can connect into yeah, I mean, that's amazing. I think a lot of people are really interested in trying to achieve those states, but uh, it seems like a daunting task that requires a lot of work, a lot of inner work. Yeah, the, well, the whole program here, the Archon Network, is programmed to keep you external. And and so if you're watching TV and listening to radio all the time, and if you're, you know, you know just have, you have all kinds of crazy lyrics blasting through your head constantly, and and you know you're you know you're programmed that you know if you buy the right beer and drive the right car and get the big house and all these other things you're going to get the women you're going to get you know get laid basically the, so so they've got you programmed and they own the first three sh chakras which are survival sex and power and we're getting blasted with all this information you should be very scared you know there's terrorists you know that's in your survival energies you know and then they say oh. If you if you buy this product, you know you're going to get the blonde on the beach, you know, playing volleyball, you know, or if you get this, and so they're they're you know you're going to be powerful, you know, if you make more money, you know, and things like that, and so they own that network, and until you transcend that and get into the heart, that's when you get out of the Archon network. So, so and you do that through nature. You get out in nature and do some alone time out in nature and you you allow yourself to reset and reprogram but uh, there are a lot of retreat centers you can go to and 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 break free of the of the network and you know break free of the first first three chakras which is what they they govern people with they manipulate people through you know survival sex and power yeah that makes a lot of sense I mean I've heard many times that the biggest purpose of the 
of their network is just that distraction to keep us infatuated with the third dimensional material world to keep us from realizing our true self because that's apparently where the real power is it is and you know and if they can keep you offset and extremely busy and with your nose to the grindstone you know keeping you poor so you have to keep you know working so you don't have any quiet time or time in nature you know that is that whole program is just to keep you focused on everything external and then you don't do any internal process and that's where the real power is 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 when you start going internal now another subject I kinda wanted to get into the details of and that that's kinda you know the multitude of beings that people claim to be communicating with and receiving messages from I think you know, there seems to be so many different beings. The best way to probably do it is by levels. I mean, you've mentioned third, fourth, yeah. fifth, and so on, dimensional beings and species. Apparently, they seem to be very different. Can you walk us through some of these entities? Are like the grays on the lowest level? Well, uh, the problem with channeling, I even wrote a book about this in Reunion with Source, and I talked about safeguards for pure channeling. And we were doing this back in the 70s, you know, uh, channeling. And and I stepped away from it because it started getting so convoluted and people's own egos were part of the channeling messages and their own desires were in there and some people were channeling from the lower astral levels where you do have the greys and the reptilian and, and discarnate spirits and and some people were channeling their own subconscious you know and they, they weren't really they didn't go through enough training to access the higher consciousness and energy levels and also they were didn't know how to heal and seen negative influences which is a must that's the first thing we teach before even meditating is how to clear your space and, and maintain your own self authority mm -hmm. so that got so convoluted and it's still convoluted you know today as we speak and you know, I hear people giving these feel-good messages, and all they do is talk about the positive. Hey, nothing to worry about. You know, max right. out, max out your credit card. We're going to get beamed up next week, or <laughs> you know, your package is in the mail. You're going to be funded next week with multi-billion dollars, and and it's again, you're back into the external. You're waiting for some external savior, you know, to come and take care of things, and it's totally contrary to what the higher dimensional beings you know teach and how they operate because their their whole program is to empower people to make their own personal you know god creator spirit connection and take responsibility for their choice choices and actions and and uh... and move from that from that space interesting so i mean as far as these beings are concerned people describe physical characteristics of them i mean i've heard you talk about feline beings before? Yeah, they, uh, they have. They can drop their frequencies down and actually walk right alongside of you. Uh, many of them have that technology. A lot of them are just out of phase with the Earth's frequency, but they can phase into it. And uh, some can do it spiritually, and some can do it through through technology. So there's a lot going on, but the vast majority of it is really other dimensional, which. I find it odd with a lot of the scientists nowadays, they, they're demanding physical proof of non-physical events and they know there's at least 11 dimensions out there, you know, filled with possibilities in life, but they want uh, physical proof, you know, 3D proof of non-physical events and maybe 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D on, 8th, 9th D maybe, 9th right. dimension. So it, it's, it's until science gets, stops this backwards self-defeating approach you know they said there's no physical proof of course there isn't they're non-physical events and so we have to rise to the occasion and develop ourselves spiritually so we do have a multi-dimensional awareness or mind and then we can understand these things and become educated in these higher dimensional experiences but with uh, the old paradigm you know of I want you know nuts and bolts on on ships that don't even use nuts and bolts a lot of them are actually organic and alive you know is is a little crazy yeah I guess it does make it hard to define them as species and races um, you know when you're talking about beings that are you know and their highest self way beyond uh, third-dimensional shell but um, mm -hmm. 
for some more details on these entities like maybe where are they where are they from do they are they from a certain location in this third dimension from a different planet or sector of the universe a lot of them are and a lot of them just tell us we have no reference points whatsoever like i had a ninth dimensional being come in and and i asked him where, where he was from and he said there's no point because you have no reference points you know and, and the name you've never heard before so it's it's really irrelevant irre but uh, a lot of them do. A lot of them, you know, they'll come from the Pleiades system. They'll come from the Orion Council of Light, from the Orion system. And some are come from, coming from, from 3 and 4D and 5D, but they're still in that system. Uh, you know, there's some coming from uh, Sirius, the feline beings, and, and ancient Lyra. Uh, they're coming from a lot of different places that we would... We would have a reference point too, but they would actually be in a different time or a different dimension that, than we're used to. And, and so it gets tricky. A lot of times when you ask somebody where they're from, it's almost better to say, when, when are you from, you know? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this then. What are some of the characteristics of, say, a ninth dimensional being that separate it and make it distinguishably different from a sixth or seventh? Well, let's, let's say... Uh, it's my understanding that the dimensions, uh, when you get into the fifth dimension, you, you're beyond the, the polarities. I mean, there's still duality, or there's still male-female and things like that, but you, you've transcended all religious and cultural boundaries, and you see the creator in all creation, and you're working you know, on that level. You know, you're working mm -hmm. on uh, a much higher level. It's funny, I'm sitting here talking right now, and this huge beetle is heading towards me <laughs> and uh you know we're talking about the egyptians you know and i'm wondering yeah. if, that, if that's scarab not... yeah it almost looks like one of those it looks like one of those old scarabs you know but that's that universal synchronicity yeah i'm sending him back outside though <laughs> and uh but anyway thanks for the message and <laughs> have a nice life <laughs> no. we got it so, yeah he's uh it's interesting the now, if you go back to the felines, a good example is they were here, and the Earth used to be have some really advanced civilizations on them, and they were they it was their resonant at a much higher dimension, and they fell. And we see the in ancient India, they call them Narissa. You know, would be sitting there this huge humanoid lion being that is the protector of Lakshmi and all the other gods and things like that. In Egypt, they had Sekhmet and, and Bost and, and a lot of other ones, and, and they're walking right alongside the Anunnaki. You know, they were protectors of the gods. And again, the Anunnaki, the bearded god, is where we got that image, you know, of the bearded god. So, so these beings are, are still around. They still exist. They're just on a different dimension. And if you're of the right frequency and and you can actually experience them if you raise your frequency you can go up and down on the vibrational continuum which which I can do just mainly because of my death experience I had a couple near-death experiences and the drowning I left the door open I went to the source itself into this golden plane of bliss and uh, you know went through all the dimensions to get there and then and now I seem to have the door open I can go back and forth and experience these different types of beings and actually interface and interact with them wow man that is that's trippy that's such an experience um let me ask you about the earth itself i mean do you think that we're unique here or are there millions of earths dealing with this extraterrestrial tapestry uh probably billions out there i know that that the latest research is they're getting up and beyond the millions, probably into the billions, when they're finding planets now in, in Goldilocks orbits. So, uh, you know, we just couldn't see them. We're seeing stars, but we're not seeing the planets revolving around the stars. And But now with the new Kepler and some of these other infrared telescopes, we're starting to map out, you know, all the planets around the stars, which is, which is pretty amazing. But the... Uh, yeah, it's happening everywhere. There's beings that are billions of years ahead of us in evolution, and there's some that are catching up to us. What do you think the point is of manifesting here? Are we? Is it to experience third dimensional reality, or are we? Is this like a an evolution along the path that we're trying to reach a higher level, or are we coming down from a higher level to experience mm -hmm. third dimension? Well, we all started with the source. 
And so, you know, the Big Bang was more of, a, of an inward implosion of consciousness, which created the light beings, you know, which created the suns, which created the planets, which created the, and it goes on and on and on. So, so a lot of people, you know, have a hard time realizing that they maybe used to be an Andromedan, you know, which are magnetized light beings that are eight to 10 foot tall beings with huge energies, like a magnet emanating from them. And people mythologically call them archangels because it looks like wings, but it's just the energy fields around them and they actually went all the way down through the physical and back and and we're in that process as well so so we all originated from the source and dropped down through the dimensions and now we're mastering the biggest test of all which is you know powerful emotions and and free will which you need to be a creator you know you can't create without those things and so if you're going to to go back to that that phase you know that's what you need to do you know to go to return to the source you know with that under your belt uh, a lot of the angelic energies don't have free will they're just like wisps of light and uh, they just kind of are more like like autobots they just do whatever they're told to do you might say or whatever their and their their hardware you know is guided to do by by other dimensional beings so it's it's kind of like a this is master school this is the biggest challenge of all uh they call it the plane of demonstration where consciousness creates reality and we get to walk through our our creations and experience them in the physical man you know for people who are stuck in the nine to five rut playing the game of economics and capitalism i mean how a lot of people, I think, are doing that on a daily basis, but in their off time, they're listening to people like you, and they're wanting to step outside of it, but it's, you mm -hmm. know, it's very tough. I mean, how do you feel about things like manifesting your reality? Like, can we free ourselves by, uh, will the universe help unfold a path before us to get us out of such a rut if we're in the right mental space? You know, it will, but we have to look at, you know, there's a lot of people say, you know, I... I just think it so it is, you know, and I create my own reality and things like that. You know, and a lot of the movies, uh, I can't remember that movie. What was that movie? Not. Uh, well, there's The Secret. The Secret, that's... yeah. Well, the, the Secret left out the biggest secret of all, and that is if you're filled with wounds and traumas and, and wrong conclusions from past experiences and fear and guilt and unworthiness, you're not going to manifest squat diddly because actually what you are going to manifest is everything that that is in the way of what you're trying to manifest, you know, all the, the guilt and unworthiness and other things when you start that process. So it, it's real important that we clean up our past, you know, release the past and release all this, you know, wrong conclusions, uh, limiting mental concepts, wounds and traumas, you know, and then we do start creating, we do start manifesting and the synchronicities start flowing, you know, the closer we are in touch with who we really are and we drop the program that you were talking about, you know, where people are just in the mainstream and, you know, you know, working all day within for some corporation and coming home and popping on the TV and getting a beer and a pizza and going to bed and doing the same thing over again. But that that world is not. Yeah, you could probably manifest uh, uh, material existence, you know, that that is keeping you along. But spiritually, it's it's actually locking you into into something that's not really uh, in the highest and best good of your evolution. Yeah, I mean, I totally see where you're coming from. I've heard people come on this show and tell me, oh, you know, if you have positive thoughts uh, and, you know, and you want to get out of that network, the universe is going to unfold a path for you if you just have the confidence and the trust in the universe. And, you know, when they've needed money, money manifests. When they've needed a place to stay, a place to stay comes to fruition. Um, but there's a lot of fear in just diving into such a situation like that because, you know, our, our network is structured in, in such a way that if you fail, you, it's really hard to get back even to where you were. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the Archon Network. It's a very enslaving, disempowering network, and that's what it's designed to do is to hold you, you know, in a certain space. And you might get ahead a little bit, you know, and you're doing okay, and then whack, you know, something comes along, and then you're, you're starting over again. 
And if you really look at the way the system's set up, it, it really isn't set up for people to get to become really totally abundant because when no. you reach a certain level, you know, they come in and fleece all the sheep, you know, and pull the rug out from under you. So uh, that's part of the Power Elites program, you know, is the American dream, which is really a nightmare when you get down to it. <laughs> well said, man. I mean, I totally agree with you. I think that it's kind of run in this a similar fashion to a casino where you've got thousands of people coming in and you've got these pictures on the wall plastered of John who got the big check, you know, Marie won a hundred grand last year yeah. and a car, but yet not everybody's winning that. Of course, you know, they're oh, yeah. not, they're not building those places by giving money away. And I think capitalism in our system is kind of similar in that uh, we're shown these Warren Buffetts and these R Rupert Murdochs and yeah. uh, we're like, hey, you know, you can be just like them. And it's like, no, only a couple of people can be like that. You are not going to get there. You know? Yeah, not on this pyramid, not the way it's set up. But it is, it's a, it's a big, it's a big scam. It's a pyramid scheme, you know, and people will claw, you know, and step on the backs of their friends and family and everything, to, you know, for those little white or little green pieces of paper, you know, so it's it's sad you know the, the what's created and and you look at our system we're watching today I, I went out to dinner here while I was down in Mexico and they had all these TV sets up on the wall and everybody's watching football and screaming and yelling and going <laughs> get him nail him you know and stuff like this and I'm going God this is like gladiator days right you know? the Coliseum and, and, and I was talking to this guy and I said you ever think about what's really going on here he goes what do you mean I go well okay so you got these huge grown men dressing up in tights <laughs> trying to inflict as much damage as possible on the other guys over control of a dead animal skin. And, <laughs> you know, and, you know, they go, I never thought about it that way. And then they just went right back, oh, did you see that? You know, you see that catch, you know, right. and everything. And I said, I go, this is just a big diversion. You know, this is competition. This is like warring, you know, this is, this is just war on a, on a lower level. You know, they aren't pulling guns out. They're using their bodies as weapons, you know, and it's over control of resources, which is this dead animal skin, which it really isn't a resource at all. So, so they're getting people to to just trash themselves, their body, trash each other, other, inflicted pain and suffering on each other over a fictitious uh, uh, prize, you know. Yeah. At the end, what's what's the difference? You know, it's the same program. Oh yeah, I. Totally agree. Just another distraction. I've never understood sports. It seems super silly. Like whenever I meet someone new, one of the first things that gets brought up is, you know, what what sports do you like? And I'm like, I don't like any sports. You know, nobody watches <laughs> me go to work. I'm not gonna go watch them. And I don't understand team loyalty. Um, I don't understand how you can like one group of random people better than another group of random people. Maybe just because they're from the city you're from, and most of them aren't even from that city. They're they're brought in on contracts to play for that team. It's exactly. all just random bullshit. It, it's, it really is a sad distraction. If there was only 10% of the attention paid to sports to some of the problems we have, I'm sure things would be a lot better for everybody involved. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was looking at some of these things, and I was talking about this guy's going, oh, yeah, they're going to send this probe. They just sent these two probes to the moon, you know, or, or something, and they're and no, and they got another. No, they have a couple more probes going to Mars, and I think China's sending a probe to the Moon, and yeah. uh, and these things. And I'm just going, okay. So I go, you know, what's up? What's up with that? Yeah, it's like uh, sending probes to Mars isn't interesting when the Cowboys are playing the Rams on Sunday. Who gives a shit about the Moon? We yeah. got the Cowboys playing the Rams. It's, exactly. It really is. Uh, I mean, if there's any case to be made for sorcery, to me, it's that because I just I, I don't understand such passion for such trivial shit. Um, but you know, one other thing I really wanted to talk to you about was this uh, I, this idea of the inner Earth. You know, there's so many people who have different perspectives on what that could be like. I mean, uh, when it comes to these beings that are coming out of Mount Adams, I mean, do you think inside there, it's just, are we talking about some deep caves, or do you think the Earth is hollow with people walking on the opposite side of the Earth's crust, like I've heard some people talk about? Well, it's kind of interesting what's going on there, because um, I've gone there out of body and had experiences, and there's a whole wow. civilizations going on there, you know, in the fourth and fifth and sixth dimension. 
And believe it or not, there are some of the mythological animals that we thought, you know, were didn't exist are still existing and preserved in, in on the inner earth. And so really? they, yeah, and the ancient Atlanteans and Lemurians that were caught in the disasters actually went into the interior to some of these huge underground facilities that were already there and have been there, you know, for quite some time. So, so basically, um, you know, it's, it's something that's been around in all, all the ancient legends. People know about it. It's been around for a long time. And, and, you know, people go, why don't they come out on the surface? And I said, well, because we're really aggressive and we're totally misusing technology and all we care about is power over others and, and using technology to harm and control and dominate. And why would they come out? And it's the same thing with the UFOs. They said, why don't they land on the White House lawn? Well, look at the condition of our of our government, you know, and there's no real intelligent life there. I mean, Congress has a 6% approval rate, rate right, right now. You know, where where's the integrity levels that it would take and the spiritual advancement to really even understand who they are and have a, a contact with them? It, it's just not present there. Well, what kind of gets me about the idea of the inner earth beings is I feel like if they were technologically advanced and they were spiritually advanced it would be very hard for them to not experience sunlight and nature and the connection to the earth um, I feel like that is why they would retreat outward well you know it's interesting because most advanced races actually live on their interior because the surface can be very uh uh, hostile? Yeah, very hostile on a lot of environments, you know, because you, know, you look at what's going on on our surface, you know, with the tornadoes and with the coronal mass ejections and the solar flares and, and uh, you know, just that alone and the earthquakes and everything else that, that are happening, you know, the floods, the constant flooding and freezing and, and everything else. If, if you had an inner sun, you know, or a way to regulate that, and your, your weather's constantly 70 degrees and you know, your food production is constant, you know, everything else is constant, you know, it'd be like a little utopia there. So I could see why they wouldn't want to come out and, and deal with that. You know, and I apply that to my own life, you know, right now when I left uh, the up there in Trout Lake, it was 10 degrees, you know, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and snow starting to fall up there too. So it's like, you know, what's the point? Uh, you know, the ranch is closed, you know, there, we can't really operate or do anything there. So we might as well, uh, you know, I might as well come down to, to a place where I can still engage and help people. And, and I do a lot of work down here with the Weechels and some of the other uh, Native American, in, the Indians down here, basically, not Native American, but the Mexican Indians. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I do lectures and things and the money goes to the, uh, to the villages, you know, to help them feed you know, stay fed and things like that. Awesome, man. Well, I also, before, we're getting kind of close to the end here, but I wanted to ask you, are there any other messages that you've been given from these contact experiences that would really be worth relaying to the people? Yeah, definitely. You know, the main message they've been given is that it's time to release the past. You know, it's time to get back into, you know, forgiving the past and, and, uh, moving forward and focus on love and joy and bliss, you know, until you become it, get out in nature. And the main thing they keep saying is the same thing that all the masters have been saying is it's time to be kind and loving to each other. <laughs> and, and nowadays it's especially important to set boundaries with those who are not being kind and loving and, and stand, stand in your own divinity, you know, stand tall in the situation. And, and it is time to, to, uh, you know, operate under universal law and maybe remind those who are not to uh, to get back with the program. <laughs> it's kind of funny because on one hand, I'm like, oh, be kind to each other, be loving to each other, that's it. Um, but then on the other hand, it's like, we've been getting that message for centuries and we have yet to take that advice. <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, if you take any enlightened master on this planet, and put them on a ship, that's pretty much what you have with these higher dimensional beings. They're, they're extremely loving and kind. They're very concerned about the earth and humanity and where we're going, and they're doing all they can to get us through some very challenging times. So, you know, obviously they would give us the same message, but, you know, they're also giving us a heads up that there is a huge vibrational lifting going on, a process. The earth is 
in, an, in what they call an ascension process and actually going into a different phase of her evolutionary process. And so we need to become frequency specific to where the earth is going if we're going to stay here. And if we don't start acting kind and loving to each other in our environment, we, we just aren't going to be here. It's those, the, the people that are resonating on that level are not going to be here. They're not going to make the shift. Well, I mean, that begs the question, you know, I listen to a lot of similar, similar teachers, a lot of Alan Watts kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of guests that talk about energy and the vibrations and the higher consci consciousness. And I understand what they're saying. And I'm generally a good person. I'm really open minded, willing to accept most possibilities. But the mm -hmm. energetic stuff and the higher consciousness, it just doesn't seem to do anything for me on a, in a physical way. Uh, I mean, what can someone in my position, which I think a lot of the listeners are, I mean, are there any other tips you can give us for how to really feel that energy, man? You know, I, I think just be open to it, but you know, what we do here, we do transpersonal release sessions here where we actually take people through past lives and clear any blocks or patterns and from age one on and clear any trauma or blocks and patterns. And at the end, they're given an initiation uh, by these higher dimensional beings and, and it's a huge life changer for yeah. them. That, that's one of the things that we do to help that process. But you How know, can someone you, sign up for that? Oh, just give us a send us an email. Just go to the the site, you know, eseti.org, and shoot us an email and tell me you want a transpersonal release process or or uh, you know a lot of these techniques and methods are in the books. Reunion with Source and Becoming Gods and the Ultimate Soul Journey. You know, all the information is there, mm -hmm. and as well as DVDs. We have teachers and healers from around the world, the the best of the best, coming to the ranch and and are, are actually have given their information to help people. So. It's there if you want to do the research, and yeah. uh, and we got to do the time and just get out in nature and start start asking. You know, if if you meditate on love and joy and bliss and send it out there and just say, "I want to know," "I want to have an experience," uh, and you do it on a regular basis, you are going to have an experience, and knowledge is going to come to you. It, it might turn you upside down for a little <laughs> while, but you will right. have that experience eventually. That's awesome, man. Well, James, this has been. Uh, completely fascinating. I, for one, really want to take an excursion to try to find one of those inner earth cities, or I'd love to come out to the ranch and record an episode with some type of transpersonal release process. I'm super interested in that. Um, is the when when spring comes around, do you open up the East Seti Ranch again? Oh yeah, yeah, we'll be open open again, and just have to give us a. Uh, you can call the the number there on the website. It's five zero nine three nine five two zero nine two, or just go to eseti dot org, and all the information is there. And and people that do come to the ranch, they they have life changing experiences, and they they kind of leave in awe, you know, like what just happened, you know, and then they have to process it. So That's it's quite awesome. interesting. So it's not totally open to the public, right? Well, people just need to ask. They need to ask for an invite uh, okay. because it is a private ranch. We had to go totally private due to some of the legalities and problems we're having with the county. But uh, now it's a totally private, and you just have to ask for a, a private invitation to come out to the ranch. Awesome, man! Cool. Well. Hey, I really appreciate your time. I know it hasn't been easy getting to a strong internet connection there in your in your spot in Mexico. Uh, thanks for sharing your perspective with us. It's been a real blast. Are there any uh, big upcoming events or maybe other projects or websites you'd like to tell people about before I cut you loose? Not really. We're just uh, we're kind of chilling out until spring, and then we're going to go out at hot and heavy. Then <laughs> that is an amazing luxury to just be able to take <laughs> off some time. Yeah. Well, thanks again, James. Tell the ETs I am ready to accept them and I'm waiting the big reveal. All right, man? All right. Careful All right. what you asked for. <laughs> thanks, man. <laughs> All right. Take care. Wow.